an old model steam engine which was made circa 1896. Part 2. Checking the diameter of the crankshaft with a micrometer. Removing the eccentric sheave after cleaning off the old solder, I tried to unsolder the pulley on the other end of the shaft, which is bent. I'm using my own method to initially fix the broken and bent crankshaft. Then I moved on to the crosshead guides, one of which is also broken. This next bit surprised me. I used my micrometer on the part of the crankshaft that goes through the bearing. And guess what? It was 100% as it should be. And the wear on the other side was only three thousandths of an inch, which I think is remarkable owing to the age of the engine. Three thou is nothing to worry about. Or should I say it's the least of my worries. There are lots of other problems with this engine that are not quite so obvious. Moving on to the eccentric, all of this is a bit grim really. I think I may have figured out how to fix this and I'll show it in a future episode. It's quite a simple fix. I will have to make an extra part for the sheave and I will use this to fix the sheave to the crankshaft. The eccentric sheave was secured to the crankshaft using a really unorthodox method. Here it is. It's a special wedge that was tapped in to tightly hold the sheave against the crankshaft and guess what, it didn't work. At one end of the crankshaft, this end in fact, was soldered on quite a thin flywheel. You can see the remains of the solder on the end. I need to get rid of this and start again. I've yet to make the flywheel and I haven't decided the best way to do it. James Evans is sending me a brass flywheel. I really don't think this Chinese flywheel will look right. I do have an unmachined Stuart number 10 flywheel that I could brutally machine and reduce it to a very thin size. Once I melted the solder on the end of the crankshaft using a small blowtorch as shown, I cleaned it off with a cloth first, then I used a piece of Scotch-Brite to clean up the rest of the crankshaft. Not to make it shiny, just to make it not look quite as bad as it did. In this clip, with the crankshaft on the bench, you can clearly see how bent it is. It's like a small banana. A small, rusty, steel banana with a fitting on the end. It's not going to work like this at all, so I need to do something radical about it. That means I need to straighten the crankshaft. The large brass pulley at the other end of the crankshaft, this is not the flywheel, it's definitely a pulley, and it's very well soldered to the crankshaft. Unfortunately, my small blowtorch wasn't good enough and didn't provide enough heat to unsolder this heavy brass pulley. I gave that up as a bad job and set about straightening the other end of the crankshaft. It's bent in the middle and it's bent at the end. Using my special precision hammer, coupled with many years of experience, I straightened the crankshaft very easily, and here you can see it spinning, more than true enough for its application. When I pulled the crank out of the chuck, I realised I was mistaken, it was only bent in the middle. And once again, thanks to my surgical hammer, it doesn't appear to be very bent at all now. A couple of very light taps finished the job. The next part of this is quite scientific and it's almost engineering. I'm using a piece of steel in the tailstock chuck to press the brass pulley into the chuck which is partially tightened. This makes sure it's square before I apply this stuff. It's Loctite 638. It's a very strong version of Loctite 601. Any proper engineers out there watching this video, I recommend that you look away now. That is because I'm using a very strong spring clamp to hold the two edges of the crank webs together and with a bit of luck these should be okay once the Loctite has cured. And I can't really do any more in this episode. I want to leave the Loctite bond to cure fully before I work with it. At some stage in the life of this engine or the death of this engine, someone's fitted two dome head brass bolts to hold the crosshead guides to the brackets that are fastened to the cylinder, or should I say, the bracket that's fastened to the cylinder. The other one's broken off. I will need to re-solder this. I'll be using soft solder, and it also explains something to me, which is why some of the cladding on the cylinder is quite dark in certain areas, 
and it's where the parts were originally soldered to it. Or maybe it was just a previous repair. Anyway, it needs fixing, and I'll do that in the next episode. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.